Almost a century ago, workers from all over the world came to the Isthmus of Panama to be part of a historical endeavor, the construction of a canal that would connect two oceans. To guarantee its competitive edge in the maritime industry, since 2007 the waterway undertook an ambitious expansion that will enable the transit of post-Panamax vessels. The expansion program began in 2007 with an investment of $5,250 million and it will be executed in eight years. It includes the dredging of the canal entrances in the Atlantic and the Pacific, as well as Gatun Lake and Culebra Cut. The increase of Gatun Lake's maximum operation level by 45 centimeters to improve the canal water supply. The dry excavation of a new access channel for the transit of post-Panamax ships and the design and build of the new locks in the Pacific and the Atlantic. One challenge in the expansion program is turning the existing entrances and canal navigational channels into suitable areas to enable the 50-foot draft required by post-Panamax ships. In comparison, a Panamax container ship that measures 294 meters long by 32.2 meters wide has a capacity to carry up to 5,000 TEUs. Container ships that will transit the new post-Panamax locks will measure 366 meters long by 49 meters wide and will be able to carry a maximum of 12,400 TEUs. With such extraordinary proportions, the expanded canal must build a new channel where the post-Panamax ships can traverse the Pacific side. It will be a 6.1 kilometer access channel that will require the excavation of 50 million cubic meters of material. Completing the dry excavation projects, contractor Jan de Nul dredges the 1.6 kilometer entrance of this new channel. This activity started back in November 2010 with the goal of removing 3.8 million cubic meters of material. The first section of the channel was flooded in October 2011. The new access channel includes the construction of the Borinquen Dam by the end of this year. The 2.3 kilometer long barrier will separate the waters of Miraflores Lake from the new access channel thus allowing its operation 9 meters above lake level. Another challenge for the expansion is to make the current oceanic entrances apt for 15 meter draft vessels. Similarly, a dredging project is required along the Culebra Cut and Gatun Lake. The objective, to widen and deepen the area for post-Panamax transit. To achieve this, contractors and the canal have invested in reliable equipment. At the beginning of 2011, one of the world's most powerful dredges arrived in Panama, the D'Artagnan. A few kilometers north of where the D'Artagnan is working, the largest and most complex contract of the expansion program is being executed, the third set of locks construction. A crucial phase of this project, the placing of permanent concrete, started in June of 2011. The contractor built two industrial parks, one on the Pacific and one on the Atlantic side, that will produce the 4.8 million cubic meters of concrete required for the locks. These are considered the largest in the region. Each park is able to produce up to 500 cubic meters of concrete per hour. While the construction moves forward, the magnitude of the future locks is already noticeable. Heavy equipment and workers become small, facing the dimensions of the lock's gates. They will weigh up to 3,700 tons each.
once built, this is where the 55 meter wide locks will be. But not everything is digging and dredging. Reforestation, wildlife, archaeology and paleontology are also part of the expansion program. In a joint venture with environmental authorities, the Panama Canal will reforest 1,200 hectares around the country. There are also discoveries of archaeological and paleontological treasures, like this dagger from the 16th century and this manatee fossil. The expansion of the Panama Canal represents the hard work of thousands of Panamanians committed to make it a symbol of national pride and an international model. <laughs>